I'm Sue Llewellyn. I do the social media section, which covers uh, how to create a social media strategy and also uh, news gathering, how to use social media for news gathering. So um, what we're going to be covering today, actually, I'm going to be looking at what you need to be concerned about when you're doing a live broadcast. <laughs> here I am. Uh, I'm actually shut away in my uh, little small office here. Um, so I think it's quite safe, but uh, I was going to do this on the phone, but then I thought, you know, there's not much to look at around here. So I'm just going to tell you a few things you need to watch out for when you're going live. Um, I'll wait a few minutes. We've only been going for a minute. I can see there are two people online so far. So do say hi. There may well be Thompson Foundation people, or hopefully it's some of the people who are taking pass, part in the Journalism Now training. While I'm thinking about that, if you want to find out more about journalism, and also about mobile journalism, 360, anything you need to know, then do have a look at the Journalism Thompson Foundation's um, EdCast section and have a look at what's going on there. So join us um, doing that. So why should you care about uh, safety and all the other things I'm going to talk about when you're doing a live broadcast? Um, most people would be concerned about battery life or not getting interrupted. Hi, her Sam. Hi, Charles. Oh, hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, good and clear from Malaysia. Gosh, it's late for you. Um, well done for staying up. I hope, hope you find it's worth it. Um, if any of you haven't signed up for the course yet, do please have a look around. There are all sorts of different deals going on. If you want to sign up and do maybe, I think it's two. If you do two free, then you can get something free at the end of it. Um, anyway, I'm going to start in a second. I came up with this idea for how to... Um, Things you need to watch out for when you're going live. Um, when I was asked to speak at the fantastic uh, Mojo conference in Ireland a couple of years ago, um, basically it was to, to issue as a journalist from the BBC. Oh, I haven't introduced my background. I was at the BBC for 15 years in the TV newsroom as a producer, reporter, covering all sorts of different types of news. Um, and for the last nine years, I've been a social media uh, strategist and trainer and consultant. Um, so the the reason I, why I was asked to, to speak about um, what you need to watch out for, I think, is being an old hand in the journalism newsroom and having seen things, you know, in, in the old days of cameras and stuff like that. Oh, what's in your background? Hi, Charles. Um, what's in my background? Oh, yeah. Um, I should explain that. Can you see up here? It says, oh, there's a, um, any eagle-eyed amongst you would see that that's... <laughs> Spectre 007. We're not actually going to be talking about Daniel Craig, but that is the acronym I thought would be useful. So, uh, and beneath it, I will put this thing that you can see here, the Spectre of live streaming. I'll stick that onto the website afterwards so you can see the topics. Anyway, basically what I'm talking about now is what you need to watch out for when you go live. So, um, all the other things that you'll learn about on Glenn's fantastic journalism, mobile, mobile journalism course, would be, um, you know, everything else you need to set up a good life. So I'm going to start off with SPECTRE. Um, so this was the acronym I thought would be useful because it would be helpful to remember. A SPECTRE is something you need to be a little bit scared of, a bit wary of. It's something that can go wrong or, or scare you. Um, so I'm going to go through each of the letters. So when you're going live, S of SPECTRE is for safety and security. And I'm going to go through more detail on each of these in a minute. The P of SPECTRE is for privacy. And we all need to have some of that, particularly these days. Um, e is for ethics. Uh, C is for copyright. T is for trolls and trolling. Oh, is that a heart? That's nice. Somebody's giving me a heart. R is for reputational risk. And E is for emotional trauma. So I'm going to start going through why you need to worry about these things. The first thing, this was always the rule in the BBC newsroom, was safety. Safety comes first and foremost in absolutely everything you do. And this is the safety of you and the people around you. So if you're live streaming from your mobile, for example, you're probably concentrating just on what's going on on the screen. You may well have your headphones in, so you won't hear what's going on around you. And it's definitely been the case that I've seen um, a fashion blogger who was mugged as she was doing a live. Um, hi, Tanzania. Hello, lovely to see you. Um, this is great seeing people from all over the world. Please do feel free to ask questions um, at any point during the live if you want to. Um, so back to the safety issue. So when you're going live, if you're going live from your phone, you're only really concentrating on your phone. In many respects, it's really useful because if you're out amongst a crowd, you're not attracting attention with a huge, 
huge you know camera setup and all that kind of stuff and back in when i first joined the bbc and for years 15 years of it uh, we would be going out with a camera person and a producer and a reporter and we would each watch each other's back and that was part of the sort of safety training that we all had to do so you don't really have that when you're a mojo journalist on your own so you've got to be super careful um, about the safety of your surroundings and the safety of the people you're talking to as well so in some respects as i said the camera uh, could make you, you know, obviously press therefore you're safe so you could be under a little bit of uh, i don't know more of a risk because you could like, look like a spy but at the same time it's more intimate with your um, mobile. The other thing you've got to be super careful of is revealing your location when you're doing the, um, the lives with your phone and revealing your location generally. And I think um, the police in Norway advised parents to watch out for the kids who were live streaming from their bedrooms. So do check that the location isn't giving away any details that you don't want to be revealed. Um, so be, be careful. Um, Safety is the first thing you should think about. That's the S of the spectre. P would be privacy. Um, and this isn't just people, it's places. So, so you've got to be sure that you have permission to film in um, you know, wherever you are. Some buildings have restrictions, and some public places have restrictions. Um, so make sure you've got permission um, because of the privacy option there. The other thing then is also people. We all have a right to privacy. And I think sometimes with your mobile, oh, hello, thank you, Gully. Nice to see you. Um, we have become like the paparazzi. We can go out and we can start broadcasting live at any point, at any time, any place. And it might be that you see, I don't know, a celebrity or somebody walking down the road and you start filming them. But what about children? Who else is in the background? You must be aware before you do this of the privacy uh, of everybody around you. Um, who can be seen? And this this is particularly the case if, you, if you're doing the 360. Um, you know, you've got to make sure that everybody within that area is aware of what you're doing. So watch out for the privacy side of it. E is for ethics. I've always said this, just because you can go live does not mean you should. And in a breaking news situation, you just don't know what's going to be happening next. And people are horribly traumatized. So, you know, maybe it was the concert in Manchester with lots of teenagers you know, filming there of distressed children, think before you start live broadcasting. Is this fair on the people around you? How would you feel if it was you? Um, you just have no idea what's going to be happening next. So you've got to be really careful about that. So there are many ethical issues there. And like, again, I think um, people are panicking. So breaking news, you've just got to be super, super careful. I think ethically anyway, just always think, is there a really good reason for doing this live? Why am I doing it? What am I going to get out of it? And what are other people going to feel about it? So the um, E of the spectre is ethics. Think about the ethical side of it. So, so far in spectre, we've had the safety, we've had privacy, and we've had ethics. The next thing you need to be looking at carefully is the um, C for copyright. This is particularly true if you're filming uh, at a concert or, or musical things. Or maybe you're at a game. People have spent, broadcasters have spent a lot of money buying the rights to screen uh, football games or whatever it is. So if you're there with your mobile filming, you're breaking copyright rules. Uh, so you've got to be super, super careful. Don't go filming in, in concerts when they say don't film there. And uh, don't necessarily, it's really also as an ex-broadcaster, uh, don't film the TV um, programmes and put those out live. I know a lot of people Will do but you are breaking copyright so be super careful with the copyright restrictions that you've got there nobody's actually asking me any questions so um please do feel free um i'll put all the details of uh, the specter things in case you've missed anything i said i'll put something up on the website um and back in the comments here but if anybody's got any questions um all ears uh, or please ask feel free to ask anything so we're covering specter which is my uh, yeah, I think I mentioned sports events, Charles. I think um, I was talking about football games. Don't go around filming football games or cricket or whatever. Well, in my case, rugby. I love rugby. Um, so don't go around filming those because you don't have the rights to broadcast it. Um, I wonder if the same is true, perhaps, of filming you know, photographs or something like that and then pretending they're yours. Anyway, so 
we're covering what I call SPECTRE, which was the acronym I came up with for what you need to think about when you are going live using your mobile. So um, just to recap for anybody who's joined in the last few minutes, uh, SPECTRE. S is for safety and security. P is for privacy. E is for ethics. C is for copyright. Now we come on to T, and this is a big one. Trolls and trolling. Um, and thank you very much for not trolling me, anybody. That's very kind of you. You're all being very polite. Um, but you will get it. If you're doing a live broadcast, I can pretty much guarantee that somebody somewhere um, will decide that they're going to cause a bit of trouble by either teasing you or being rude or being sexist or racist or homophobic or something. Don't take the trolls personally. They do it to everybody. Don't feed them. If it gets really bad, you might decide that you need to switch off the comments um, or have somebody moderating them for you and I think if you've got a guest and you're doing a live with a, a guest it's really worth warning the guest um, you know we have a duty of care as journalists it's worth warning the guest that they might get abuse from some you know random strangers out there I personally don't think the social networks do a very good job of monitoring um, trolls and shutting them down and hate speech and things I think it's really poorly monitored poorly controlled and therefore as journalists we have a duty to make sure that the people we're talking to and interviewing are uh, aware that there could be um, you know some kind of a, a trolling hate type attack on them the other thing to be aware of is that um, I think anybody going live or, or raising their profile in the social media space should make sure their privacy settings are locked right down make sure your Facebook page doesn't reveal your photos your friends where you live all of those kind of things and be aware that if you are talking to somebody they may well become the subject of unwanted attention from trolls so um, I think the uh, tea for trolls inspector um, it's not just when you're doing a live on your phone or wherever but it's it's generally I think you've got to be super careful with this so make sure you're not giving away information that you don't want revealed make sure that people you are talking to are aware that this could happen and if necessary, switch off comments. I'm not going to switch you guys off. Um, in fact, you're all being so polite. I would really like it if anybody had any questions for me. Um, right, so that is the uh, SPECT so far of SPECTRE. Um, let me come to the R. R is reputational risk. Now, this could be that you do a live, and I hope this isn't the case for me, you do a live that is so boring, people um, will just switch off and not come back uh, again. For anymore so I hope that's not the case here um, but it could be a lot more serious than that you could get something wrong you could be um, mistaken in what you're doing somebody you're talking to could be defaming somebody else so watch about watch out for defamation and if uh, anybody does say something you know the hate speech or the, the defamatory comments you can say immediately I'm really sorry about that and then tell them to stop uh, so I think uh, reputational risk just like if we were booking a guest to come on a program on the BBC, we would speak to them first. We'd find out what their views are. We'd sort of run through what was going to happen. So we had a pretty good idea before anybody came on the show live, what they were going to be saying, what they were like, whether they were likely to be trustworthy. Um, so when you're doing the lives, um, again, you know, straight into Facebook or wherever you're doing it, just make sure you know who you're talking to and what they're going to say so that they don't get you into trouble and warn them that, you know, to keep the language clean, not to say anything uh, rude or defamatory about anybody. So reputational risk. The other thing I would recommend is that you have a plan for if something does go wrong. So think about what could go wrong in any situation on social media and then have a plan to deal with it because uh, bad news spreads incredibly fast, and particularly if it's live. So that is the um, SPECTR. Uh, of the spectre so far so just for anybody else who's joined us late later that is the acronym I came up with how to be safe when live streaming so s safety and security p privacy e ethics c copyright t trolls r reputational risk and the e is for emotional trauma this is incredibly important as journalists we all know how much horrible content there is out there and the impact it has on us if we see something. So there's a PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and all sorts of problems like that. So if you are filming 
for example, the aftermath of a bomb or some kind of, I mean, those terrible uh, lorries crashing into people. If you decide that you want to start live streaming that, which is a natural instinct of a journalist, you have got to be careful because you just don't know what people are going to see. And the evidence is that if somebody is shocked, you know, they're not expecting something bad to happen, the damage to them emotionally can be much more significant than if they are slightly mentally prepared. It's like, okay, I know I'm going to watch something bad now. I'll put my emotional armor on. But when you're live broadcasting, live streaming, people are not prepared. So I would suggest that the emotional trauma side of it is a really critical thing that you need to be thinking about. And I think I've seen things, for example, somebody live streaming the Bangkok bombing some years ago, and the the comments that came up on the Periscope Live after that is, I can't unsee that. That's a really good thing to keep in mind. You can't unsee something bad. So make sure that you know, what you're saying there is, um, think about it. You might want to record something and then in the moment, you know, the heat of the moment, you might think, oh, no, no, that's, that's not good. I'm not going to broadcast that. Whereas if you just go straight away and you go live, you can't control it. Um, so maybe as a journalist, you record it and then you could edit out any of the really um, troublesome uh, images. Certainly when I was in the newsroom, we would be taking the raw footage in overnight, you know, on the night shift. Images from something terrible would come in and we would have to decide what was broadcastable and what wasn't. Uh, what was okay to use and what wasn't. And many times we saw terrible, terrible things that you'll never forget. And we had to clear them and you know, say, no, no, you can't use those. So if you're going to go live from somewhere, you don't know what's going to happen. You must prepare people. Um, but I would suggest that in a breaking news situation, don't go live straight away. If it's something bad, obviously, if it's happy news, like I don't know, engaged royals or something like that, you, you know, people celebrating is good. But don't do it if it's in a breaking news um, situation. So just to recap, um, or actually before that, uh, has anybody got any questions about what you need to think about when you're going live? Nobody saying anything? No more questions there? I would also be really good to hear from you if you've got anything you'd like to share of what has happened when you've been live broadcasting that you feel others should be aware of, because then I can add that into the, the, um, you know, the document that I was going to share afterwards. So just to recap on this, it's perfectly okay. When Facebook first introduced Facebook Lives, Mark Zuckerberg was all full of it, thought it was all great. And he said, it's live. It can't possibly be perfectly planned out ahead of time. That's true when something's live, but you can be pretty careful about thinking where you're going on something beforehand. And then he continued, somewhat counterintuitively, it's a great medium for sharing raw and visceral content. Indeed it is, and it's been abused horrendously. We have had live streamed suicide, rape, torture, shooting, high-speed car crashes, the aftermath of bomb blasts or terrorist attacks. So live streaming is not what it's cracked up to be. You've got to be careful with it. Um, and I know I sound like <laughs> the voice of doom and, you know, oh no, my live stream is really bad. I've been a journalist for, oh, I don't know, 25 years or something. Um, and I just know, and also a psychologist by background. I know what bad things can do to people about imagery so be super careful so just to recap again on what i was talking about um how to stay safe when live streaming spectre and this has nothing to do with daniel craig and uh, james bond it's just what a spectre is a big scary something to look out for so s safety and security that's your safety and the safety of the people around you um watch your back when you're live streaming watch out for other people make sure things are safe uh, again, it could be um, the other thing with safety is you, maybe you're encouraging others to go out and live stream. Certainly, uh, you know, if you're a broadcaster or you're a journalist and you speak to a member of the public who's live streaming, they might go and say, oh, I'll go and get you some more pictures on that. That's not a good idea because it could it might be dangerous for them. So uh, you may well be held accountable and to say nothing of can you sleep at night if something bad has happened to somebody. So. Reminder again about privacy, we all have a right to it. Don't go poking your camera into other people's business where it's not wanted or into private places where filming isn't allowed, some buildings it's not allowed. 
some you know train concourses or something like that so think about privacy and particularly children children you should not be filming children who are under 18 um you know without the permission of a parent or guardian certainly in the uk um e is ethics just because you want to film something is it right how would you feel if somebody was doing that to you uh c again for copyright mostly music sports games um ah oh. yes okay so that, that question a really good question actually from the thompson foundation um what would i say to especially look out for about 360 video that is a really good question the thing with 360 video is that it is 360 so whilst you might be looking this way you will be filming people all over the place there will be people all around i know when people have done this before um excuse me I'm really itchy, itchy uh they have marked out an area um where the camera would actually be filming so that they could say to people coming past if you step into this zone, you will be on camera. Um, so are you okay with that? You know, maybe oh, you need to sign a release form or just acknowledge the fact that they would be on camera. So if there was a way of marking out the area that would be covered when you're filming, that would be a really useful thing to do. So um, because 360 will cover people who don't know they're being filmed. It's all over the place. So thank you, Thompson Foundation. That was a very nice question. Has anybody else got any other questions or any other comments about um, how you have found doing live streaming yourself? Oh, why would you not want to share your, oh, so this is another good question. Why would you not want to share your location as a reporter covering an event? You might want to make sure that you are safe. Um, quite a lot of times, I have, I've seen journalists, I won't mention their names, famous international journalists who have inadvertently given away their location when they're in a dangerous place. Sometimes the location is on, on their phone. So watch out for that. I just think, you know, people will know where you are. They might come and find you. Uh, so location, yeah, brilliant. If you want to say, here I am at the Oscars, it's all wonderful. Yeah, definitely locate yourself, but not if you're at the site of a, a dangerous protest or you're filming something, you know, that is maybe sensitive. If you've got people who, could be um, followed by the government or followed by I don't know, dangerous people. So watch out for that. Uh, would I recommend some materials to read for this topic and the knowledge and platforms to post? Ah, uh, hmm. I, what I could do is I could write something, but um, I haven't actually read a lot of stuff on that. So thank you, Thierry, for that. Um, I, I will have a think about that and maybe post it afterwards. Uh, what about indoor? your indoor background? Any good tips? Um, oh, just not in terms of Sir Charles, sorry about that. What about your indoor background? Um, I guess maybe lighting or, um, oh, actually that's a very good point. Make sure, which I did, on the board behind me, I did have a list of um, invoices as I was sending out. So I've I rubbed them off the board. So make sure that you are not, um, there's you know, nothing secret out there. I know that one major broadcaster did a live once or took a, camp, a picture. And behind it was a whiteboard with all the phone numbers of all their contacts on it. So make sure that the background is not revealing anything you don't want it to see. I don't mind you seeing <laughs> that I've put the uh, live streaming thing here and this is just, the rest of it is just my office. So I did check. So thank you, Charles, good question. What if you're covering a normal event that suddenly turns violent? Should you, violent, should you stop going live? I personally might do. Uh, and I recommend that you might seriously think about it or at least if you are going to continue filming make sure somebody's watching your back make sure you tell your audience that they might be seeing something they don't want to see that it, you know they don't know what's going to come up next uh, i would really be very careful um, to make sure that you know that they're aware that things could go wrong again as i said if you are prepared for something bad you are more likely to be able to cope with it if it happens I recommend generally, though, that if, if something is going, um, you know, looking like it's turning nasty, stop filming, uh, because it might well attract attention to you. You may well not be just sort of looking at what's going on around you. Something terrible might happen. Um, again, maybe perhaps work with somebody, ask for some help. So yeah. Um, <laughs> and yes, thank you, Charles. Remember the man interrupted by the child coming into his room. That is such a good. If anybody hasn't seen that video. Uh, I think he was Professor Kelly, and he's an expert on Korea, and was doing a live for BBC World. And um, 
And I have locked the door here so my dog and my partner can't come rushing in. I don't have small children. Um, but he hadn't locked his door and when he was doing the live, the little kiddies came rushing in and it's one of the best things I've ever seen. I loved it. So watch out that people don't disturb you. Um, I do, as the Thompson Foundation has said, I cover a spectre in my um, online course on the Journalism Now uh, part of the online course. So it is mentioned there, Thierry, you were asking before about that. Uh, what advice would you give to broadcasters using UGC, UGC lives, UCG, UGC lives? Um, oh, I'm not quite sure what I'd give. I'd be super careful. I'm not quite sure what the question means, actually. So I'm sorry about that. Not completely clear what you're asking. Um, UGC lives, user generated content. Well, if you're filming it, um, then it's your UGC. Maybe that could be clearer. Um, I think we are, well, we're 26 minutes in. I could just recap what we've done and tell you where you can find more information on what's coming up next. So for those of you who haven't been with us the whole time, I've just been talking about what you need to be aware of when you're live streaming from your phone or your laptop. Um, um, safety, safety, be aware of your safety, be aware of your safety. Be aware of your safety. Uh, don't you know, be careful about revealing your location. It might be a good thing, but it might well not be, uh, particularly if your children are live streaming from their bedrooms. It's not a good idea to reveal your location. Um, watch out for being mugged if you're busy looking at your phone all the time. What's going on behind you? And the, these days, the muggers will come rushing up and grab it, whether they're on a little moped or just walking by on the street. Remember privacy. You might not have filming rights in a place, and people have a right to a private life. Just because you see you know, Daniel Craig or somebody walking down the street, don't suddenly start filming them and think, you know, that's nice, poking a camera into somebody's face is not a good thing. Um, ethics. Just because you can go live does not mean you should. I think clearly have a really good, clear editorial reason, journalistic reason, um, and that's justifiable and you followed all the editorial guidelines. Um, copyright. Don't go filming at concerts or sporting events because you don't own the rights to those kind of things. And somebody might come along and decide they want to get some money from you. Trolls, watch out for them and um, you can turn off comments. I definitely recommend as a rule turning off comments on YouTube. Um, I know that PewDiePie, one of the most famous YouTubers, has turned comments off because they're so toxic. And until the social networks can address this and address the hate speech properly, you have to be very careful of the trolls and you have to warn everybody who you are interviewing about trolls. Um, so that was the T, reputational risk. Try and make sure, and I hope I have, try and make sure you haven't bored people who are watching your live. Don't go live just for the sake of it. Um, I'm doing this to try and make people think and to make them uh, more safe um, and not get into, into trouble. So try not to be boring and absolutely check your facts. Make sure that you are uh, not saying anything defamatory or that your people that you're doing the live with are saying anything defamatory. So be super careful with that and have a crisis plan for if things go wrong. Um, and again, the last one, E, is for emotional trauma. I think the number of horrible pictures that we see these days on social media is incredibly traumatic. And you never know who's watching. It could be children. Um, it could be anybody. You know, it could be your mum or your granny. Um, just because we as journalists think that something might be a good story does not necessarily make it ethical or emotionally acceptable to broadcast that sort of thing. So I think, you know, always think twice. It's better to be safe than sorry and operate the precautionary principle. Uh, otherwise, you could find yourself in trouble. Um, for further information on all of this and anything else that you need to learn about journalism and social media and mobile journalism, ooh, there's another one. Um, oh, how about the appropriate? Sorry, here we go, Bernard. Thank you. What would you consider as the other legal risks of live streaming beyond rights to get a film? Of a, okay, other legal risks. Well, legal things would be children filming children, um, copyright, contempt. All the normal things that you would have to be careful with doing social media um, or, you know, have a look at sort of ethics and uh, legal issues about what you might say. So watch out for those. Um, how appropriate is the length and the timing? Is it something to worry about? Yeah, I think just going on and say, I'm going to do a live for an hour because I can. Um, that's ridiculous. You only, you know, make sure that you've got something to say and don't stretch it out and bore people, um, which 
it's probably nearly the end of what I've got to talk about, so I don't want to bore you. Um, so the timing and the length, yes, try and know where you're going. Try and um, make it as interesting as possible. Uh, I would say don't just keep going because you can. So mobile journalism, 360 video, all, all kinds of journalism training generally, go to the Thompson Foundation website, thompsonfoundation.org. Other questions you can write uh, beneath this and um, you know in the Facebook page. Uh, and if you want to ask me any questions, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Sue Llewellyn, and that's got lots and lots of L's in it. So the more L's, the merrier. Uh, double L E W E double L Y N. So at Sue Llewellyn, if you want to tweet me. Um, next week, if you tune in at 12 o'clock next Friday, you're going to get Ritza talking about 10 things you need to know about doing Mojo, which will be brilliant. Well, looking forward to that. Um, so thank you very much for joining me, and uh, please do feel free to leave other comments here. But uh, hopefully see you again soon and thank you for your, for your comments from all around the world that's lovely really appreciate it goodbye